Hello there, Richard here bringing you another one of our thoughts for the day. I'd like to chat to you today about responsibility. I wonder if you've ever been given responsibility for something and been torn between excitement and fear. A big one for me that I can remember in my life was when I became a parent for the first time. Really excited along with my wife that we had this new uh, life that was our own, filled with a love and a care for it when it was born. We were going to protect it, it was ours, we were going to uh, yeah, help, it, help the child grow to be the best that it can be. Wanting to share that news with the world but also at the same time quite daunted by the prospect of having to care for, continually provide for, and uh, give wisdom to this young life and feeling almost sort of totally inadequate and underprepared for all that that would entail. That's quite a big example, but there are probably small ones that happen each day, perhaps a project at work or something new that we're trying to do at home. We can be excited by the responsibility we have for making something happen. Maybe even proud when we're given more or extra responsibility than before. But also along with that can come a, a fear that we're not up to the job, that we're gonna mess it up somehow. Well, if that's you, there's a challenge and some great news as well in the verse that I'd like us to look at today. I'm sharing this verse with you on the day when the church remembers Jesus ascending into heaven. So he's finished his earthly ministry, he's died, he's risen from the dead, and he's about to ascend into heaven. And he says some words to his disciples before he does that. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's a few that I'd like to particularly look at today from uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And Jesus said this to his disciples, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The thing to notice about these words that Jesus said is that the disciples that were with him weren't given a choice. Did you notice he said, you will be my witnesses. In other words, you have responsibility to point people to me. And they're going to do that first of all in Jerusalem and then Samaria, which was the surrounding company, but they're going to country, but they're going to do it to the ends of the earth. And by and large, the disciples did a pretty good job at that because the church we have today has spread all around the world. You might be a Christian, I certainly am. And we are Christians because there have been people witnessing to that. They've taken their responsibility and they have gone with it. And for us today, if you are a believer in Jesus, you don't have a choice whether you are a witness to him or not, because you are a witness to Jesus. But we do have a choice, I think, of whether we're going to be a reliable witness or an unreliable one. So why is the church still growing? Why has the church succeeded in growing all the way around the world and people of nations all across the globe, followers of Jesus? Well, that's because when the disciples were given this responsibility, they didn't have to do it alone. Because Jesus didn't just say, you will be my witnesses. He also says, you will receive power from the Holy Spirit. And they went to Jerusalem and they prayed and they waited for 10 days. And then they received the power, which was the Holy Spirit coming upon them on that day of Pentecost. Now, we don't have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come as followers of Jesus because it has come already. And if we've given our lives to him, we have received the Holy Spirit. We can always pray for more filling from the Holy Spirit though. So if you're dry, do ask for the Holy Spirit to come and fill you up. But today, as we look at that word about witness and responsibility, as we start this 10 day season in the church, when we uh, look at the Ascension today and then 
focus more towards Pentecost over the next days. We would like to invite you to think about who might God be asking you to witness to. Are there five people that you can commit to praying for over the next 10 days that you might be able to make God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit known to them in some way? We'd love for you just to commit, as I said, to praying for five people. A great way to uh, get people to find out more, those people that you're praying for, may be indeed as well, to invite them along to Alpha that we're doing online starting on the 4th of June. So do think about that today. You might not have to go to the ends of the earth. It might just literally be somebody at the end of your road. But who is God calling you to witness to? this day because you are his witness you have responsibility but you also have help from him and Sarah was going to chat to you tomorrow in tomorrow's thought for the day about how we might identify those people that God is placing on our heart God bless you all